The American Broadcasting Company, ABC. The obsessive desire to rent or buy a movie is known as gots to habits. When you get it, go to Blockbuster Video. All the great new releases will displace guts to habits with the profound feeling of real. Meet two sisters whose laughter, tears, and joy will surprise you beyond all expectations. Emma Thompson, Kate Winslet, Alan Rickman, and Hugh Grant. Sense and sensibility. Rent it tonight. It's hard to find clothes that fit. And when you do, they're not you. Let Quick Weight Loss Center help you lose weight and keep it off. I like the fact that it wasn't prepackaged foods. I could go to any grocery store and find what I needed. I could even go out to dinner. I was able to eat uh, and stay within the program, so that made me feel more confident. I lost 105 pounds a year ago, and it's still off. Lose weight, $5 a week. Now open 14 locations throughout the Delaware and Lehigh Valley. Call Quick Weight Loss Center, 1-800-526-SLIM. This is the new TV guide. Just open it up, and boom, you're there. Inside the Summer Games issue, a two-week pull-out guide with schedules, expert predictions, plus a behind-the-scenes look at the athletes. When you want to be there, get inside TV Guide. The new gyro cam, only on Chopper 6. See what it shows you. Good afternoon. We'll update the TWA crash story and join the Oprah Winfrey show in a couple of minutes. First, the very latest on the crash of Flight 800. Federal safety officials and the FBI and New York City law officials have been all over the scene in the Atlantic Ocean, some 10 miles south of East Mauritius and Long Island. There have been reports from a New York congressman that one of the plane's flight recorders had been found, but investigators so far are denying that report. We also know that 16 students and five teachers from Montoursville, PA, a small town upstate near Williamsport, were on that plane, and four people with ties to the Channel 6 viewing area were also on the plane. More than 100 bodies have been recovered. Officials say there's virtually no chance that anybody survived, and the latest TWA report indicates 210 passengers and a crew of 18 were on the plane. Now, we have several live reports to bring you. First, John Rollins is in East Mauritius, which is the on-ground headquarters for the search mission. That's only 10 miles from the crash. John, what's the latest there? Well, Mark, the re rescue effort here has pretty much become a recovery effort, as you said. I think hopes are fading that they will find anyone who survived this crash. The Coast Guard is using 27 boats, five helicopters, and one long-range search plane at this point in time. Their search pattern covers about 240 square miles about 10 to 15 miles behind me out in the Atlantic Ocean. Now, we did hear from the NTSB's Robert Francis a short time ago. He says that despite the unusual circumstances, meaning the fact that uh, so many people saw a fireball in the sky last night, the status of this investigation is still that it is an accident. We have learned really precious little about uh, Flight 800 at this point and why it fell from the sky. We are told, though, that at this point there is no evidence of any criminal act. No evidence that an explosive was used at this point. However, the FBI is certainly looking at it. The final tally, or the, at least I should say the current tally on bodies found at this level is that 104 bodies have been recovered. Two have been identified. Ten have been tentatively identified. Many pieces of the aircraft have been found, including uh, one up to about 30 feet in length. There appears to be some charring, certainly effort or evidence of a fire. Some confusion, as you said earlier, some confusion as to whether the flight data or the flight voice recorder has been recovered. A local congressman here said earlier today that they had found that recorder, at least one of those recorders. Now we are told by the NTSB that there is no evidence of that. I'm John Rollins, live on the action cam in Long Island. Mark? John, before you go, there are people, of course, around here with connections to the crash, and of course, people all over the country wondering what arrangements are being made. They're calling uh, TWA. Uh, as far as you know, what is being done with the families, uh, with the victims' remains, what, what exactly are they doing now? Well, the last we heard is that the families are being brought to JFK. They're being kept in a hotel there outside of JFK. Uh, the bodies that are recovered are being brought back to a Coast Guard station not far from where we are right now. A temporary morgue has been set up, and uh, they are being able to transition the bodies from there to a morgue inland. And there, we understand, will be where the uh, identification of the bodies will take place with the families involved. All right, John, thanks very much. John Rollins live in East Mauritius with the latest from the scene. Now, so far, we know of at least four people with ties to this area who died in the crash of Flight 800. 
Arthur Benjamin was a teacher at the Masterman School in the Spring Garden section of the city. He and his wife Joan were off on a vacation to France. Judith Connolly de Louvrier is the brother of Tom Connolly, owner of Connolly Container Company in Maniunk. She was on her way back to her home in France. And Gideon Miller was a Lancaster County native, a commercial pilot for TWA, but at the time he was a passenger on this flight last night going to Europe on assignment. The crash of TWA Flight 800 has hit very hard in the Pennsylvania town of Montoursville. Sixteen high school students from that town were on the doomed plane. Montoursville is a relatively small community, 120 miles northwest of Philadelphia, not far from Williamsport, PA. Flags are flying at half-staff there today. Montoursville High School is closed for summer classes, but it's open for students, teachers, and parents, and others who today were looking for a place to grieve. The 16 students ranging in age from 14 to 18 were on board the Paris-bound flight along with five adult chaperones. They were part of a French club which spent all last year raising money to make this annual trip to France. School officials called the teenagers, quote, exceptional, the kind of children you'd like to take home and make your own. Counselors from near and far have poured into the community offering support. Officials say the entire town is in mourning. I don't think it's, it's sunk into people yet. If I had to characterize the evening, it would be one of pretty much stunned silence. And people have been, uh, it's been eerily quiet in there, really. It's been, uh, you would almost think it'd be too quiet. And uh, I think it's early yet in this process and there'll be much more grieving at a later time, and we've been told that by the professionals, that later down the line we'll have to provide some support for students as they begin to realize who's no longer there. The town has organized a candlelight vigil for later tonight to remember the 16 students and five adults. Pennsylvania Governor Tom Ridge, by the way, is expected to attend, and of course, Action News will be there. As we mentioned, the crash of Flight 800 has hit very close to home at one Philadelphia public school. Karen Friedman's live at Masterman High School in Spring Garden with more on that. Karen? Well, yes, Mark. Arthur Benjamin was a computer science teacher here, and he was more than that. He was also the man who coordinated and helped develop a special program for the mentally gifted children here. He was somebody who was liked, he was loved, he was respected. And most recently, he had spent some time with colleagues taking a field trip over the summer. And as I was told, he spent that time not only with the colleagues, but with people he loved the most, his students. They loved Arthur. Arthur loved kids. He did much more than just be a classroom teacher. He was a, a father confessor, a counselor. He just did much more than than just walk into a classroom on a daily basis and, and try to and do the three R's. Colleagues here at Masterman tell me Benjamin and his 56-year-old wife Joan were on their way to Paris to see their daughter. From there, they had rented a chateau in the south of France and the whole family was to meet there for a three-week vacation. Benjamin, who taught at Masterman for six years and at Girls High for 15 years, is survived by two daughters and a son. Everybody we spoke to today says he loved his students, and no question, they loved him back. He was very special with the students. He had a very close relationship. Um, he organized a lot of uh, activities and things, and he was, he was just a great guy and one of my personal friends. And a guy who no doubt will be sorely missed. A little bit about his wife, Joan. We are told 56 years old. She was a retired architect. The couple apparently had been married for just 35 years. And the three children that we just mentioned, two live uh, in Europe, one in Italy, one in France, a 34-year-old daughter, a 30-year-old daughter, and a 26-year-old son who lives here in this area. But once again, Arthur Benjamin, his wife Joan, being mourned at this hour by many people here all over the Delaware Valley. I'm Karen Freeman, live on the Action Cam in Spring Garden. Back to you. Thanks, Karen. Another victim with ties to this area is Judith Connolly de Louvrier. She was born in Jenkintown, but lived in France with her husband and two children. Judith Connolly de Louvrier was heading back to France after visiting relatives in the area the last few days. Her brother, Tom Connolly, owns the Connolly Container Company in Manion. Judith de Louvrier was a 45-year-old writer and designer, very active in the arts community. She married Philippe de Louvrier in 1984. They had two children, Henry, nine years old, Isabel is seven. The children did not make the trip to the States. Judith and her husband had come here to help renovate a family house, and they finished a day early. 
She was not supposed to be on flight 800. She was supposed to leave with her husband today, but she wanted to take an early flight home to see the children. Her husband stayed behind. President Clinton is expressing the sympathy of the nation to families of the crash victims. Mr. Clinton delivered a brief statement at the White House this morning, and we'll hear more of that. But right now, let's go to ABC because they have even more in the form of an update. We join the network. And our knowledge about the disaster on board TWA Flight 18800. Uh, you probably still know, as we've been reporting last night and all day, that 210 passengers, 14 flight attendants, and four cockpit crew died off the coast of Long Island, New York. There have been no survivors as the search continues throughout the day. We're going to go immediately to Washington, where our national security correspondent, John McCarthy, has been looking at, Jack, I understand, a connection to the violence in Saudi Arabia. Well, there has been a communication from a terrorist group that was associated with a previous bombing. This one uh, was a November 5th bombing in Saudi Arabia. The name of the group is the Movement for Islamic Change, and it was a message sent in Arabic to an Arabic newspaper. What is so chilling about this message, it was received yesterday by this Arabic newspaper, and it all but predicts what is going to happen. It says, quote, all will be surprised by the size of the attack, the place, and the time. And then it goes on to say, quote, the time will be tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning is soon. Now, that aircraft was, uh, came out of the sky last night, uh, but in the Middle East and in the Persian Gulf, that was tomorrow morning. Jack, uh, what, to the best of your knowledge, does American intelligence make of this at the moment? Well, American intelligence is studying this with great interest, and it is skewing the investigation, frankly. With this kind of specific warning, uh, in retrospect, they look back and say, this may well have roots in the Middle East. Okay, now the National Transportation Safety Board and President Clinton have said very carefully, this is an accident until we can prove otherwise. Is that the way it's being treated in security circles in Washington? Well, in security circles, they have to investigate all possibilities, and I must say, at this point, they are very quickly coming to the conclusion that they believe it was a terrorist attack. And have they any idea at this point, any idea whatsoever as to how it might have taken place? Well, one of the things they have been studying is the possibility that it could have been a small missile that knocked this plane out of the sky. And one of, there are two reasons that they are looking at that theory. One is an anomaly that they have found on an FAA radar track, and this is being studied very intensively. And the other is there have been several eyewitnesses that say they saw something that looked like a flare going up to the aircraft before the explosion. Okay, Jack, thanks very much. John McCrethy will have more about this in ABC's World News tonight. There's the important connection. There's been some discussion today about the possibility that it might have been a surface-to-air missile and that anomaly on the radar screen to which John McCrethy refers has been bedeviling people. It's the question of people perhaps having seen something going up and not just coming down, which adds at least to that theory. As for the Saudi Arabian connection, the attack in November 1995, to which uh, Jack McCrethy refers, uh, the United States and Saudi Arabia went on in November 1995 to disagree over what should happen to the men involved in that attack. And on May the 31st, as I recall, of this year, four men were beheaded for that attack, and American intelligence officials were outraged because they believed at the time they could have got more information out of these individuals about terrorist cells in Saudi Arabia and or elsewhere in the Middle East. But to repeat, President Clinton and the National Transportation Safety Board says, say that until this is proven to have been an act of terrorism, they will continue to treat it as an accident. The flight data recorder and the cockpit voice recorder have not been recovered, and you saw just a glimpse there of the operation that continues to recover bodies and pieces of the aircraft. A hundred bodies have been retrieved and brought to shore so far. A long, desperately difficult day uh, for people in this country and elsewhere. I'm Peter Jennings. We'll have more about all this on World News tonight. We're back live now in Philadelphia, and as I was starting to tell you before, President Clinton did express the sympathy of the nation to families of the crash victims. Now, Mr. Clinton spoke at the White House this morning before there was any inkling about what might have happened, so obviously he's being very cautious in what he said this morning. This was the president at the White House speaking about the loved ones, the victims of this terrible tragedy. This happened 20 hours ago. Uh, we are well aware that uh, only the passage of time the love of your family and faith in God can ease your pain. But America stands with you. Our thoughts, our prayers have been with you through the night and they will be with you in the days to come. Our government is doing everything we can 
to continue the search for survivors and to find out the causes of this accident. We will determine what happened. But for now, I want to caution again the American people against jumping to any conclusions and ask that today, overwhelmingly, our people uh, remember the families of the people who were on that flight in their prayers. Now, Attorney General Janet Reno, also speaking before she had all the information I think that John McCarthy has brought to us, said don't jump to any conclusions about this crash. She told reporters that a couple of calls claiming responsibility had been received, but they came afterwards. McCarthy's report, of course, on the possibility of a threat beforehand does change the complexion, and so much more on that obviously remains to be learned. The shock of the TWA crash has hit every airport in every city in the world, and the questions about safety and security are back on everybody's mind. Suzanne LaFranchi is now live at Philadelphia International Airport with a story there. Suzanne? Well, Mark, moments ago, airport officials announced that there will not be an official increase in the security level here at the airport, at least not yet. They are still awaiting word from the FAA who would have to approve such a move. It could come at any moment. It could not come at all. Currently, the airport is under a level three, which has been in effect and imposed by the FAA back in January. It requires passengers to have two forms of ID. Passengers are questioned about their luggage. There are increased police patrols and vehicles could be towed if left unattended at curbside and luggage could be confiscated if left unattended as well. Now if there is an increase it could go to level four which is, was imposed during the Persian Gulf War. That would also prohibit everyone but ticketed passengers onto the concourse. Now the mood here as you can imagine is a bit uneasy as passengers here try to comprehend the air tragedy. Aqua Davis has worked for TWA for 22 years. She can barely talk about last night's air tragedy. Oh, it's horrible. It's, we're really, um, it's just sad. Many passengers traveling TWA today believe the odds are in their favor, giving little thought to their own vulnerability. Whatever you do, there's risk involved, so. But when it's out of your hands, I don't know what else you could do about it. It's uh, something that happened and, uh, you know, just life goes on. I can't worry about that. However, Alice Powell said thoughts of the aircraft's fiery explosion did make her uneasy on her flight from Dallas. You know, it does make you uncomfortable, but when it's your time, it's going to go down no matter what. So. We have been told that Aviation Director Mary Rose Loney will hold a news conference in about 20 minutes, and we will tell you what she has to say. For now, I'm Suzanne LaFranchi reporting live in the Action Cam from the Philadelphia International Airport. Thank you, Suzanne. Now let's just update for you what we learned from ABC News. John McQuethy at the State Department in Washington. Uh, we now know apparently a, some terrorist organization in the Middle East sent a warning to an Arabic newspaper yesterday saying that in the morning there will be an explosion, there will be a tragedy. And of course, 8 o'clock last night in New York City is about 3 o'clock in the morning in the Middle East. And so there could be a possibility that this was a threat. We also know that the airplane did come, the equipment plane itself actually came from Greece to New York. There is one additional wrinkle that he reported, <clears throat> and that is that some people reported seeing something that looked like a flare in the area heading up toward the plane possibly before the explosion and the crash. And so they're also investigating the possibility that a missile may have been fired from somewhere in the ocean at the plane. So those two wrinkles obviously cast a very frightening pall over the story and as it develops we'll bring you the latest as soon as we get it. If nothing happens between now and five of course Action News begins at five o'clock and there is one local item we should mention to you and that is that Dave Roberts is tracking the possibility of a flash flood watch for late tonight and early tomorrow, all day tomorrow in fact, Dave Roberts AccuWeather, a flash flood watch for the entire Channel 6 region, so you'll want to keep up on that as well. Again, anything late breaking will interrupt. If not, we'll rejoin you at 5 and 6 with Action News. Now we return to Oprah Winfrey. For now, I'm Mark Howard. A scene. Action News. Delaware Valley's leading news program with Scott Palmer, Dave Roberts, Lisa Thomas-Laurie, and Mark Howard. Good evening. Mark will be along at 6. Monica Malpass joins us. And the big story on Action News tonight is the investigation into the deadly crash of TWA Flight 800. All 228 people on board are feared dead, including victims with ties to the Delaware Valley in Pennsylvania. However, authorities are not giving up hope in the search for survivors. 
So far, though, they have been retrieving plane wreckage and more than 100 bodies. The Boeing 747 exploded and crashed into the Atlantic Ocean off Long Island, New York, late last night. In just a moment, we will have a live report from the scene, but here are some of the developments we're now following. The victims include four people with ties to our area and 16 Pennsylvania high school students and five chaperones. We'll have live reaction. President Clinton offers words of caution on speculating tourists behind the TWA disaster. And locally, we'll have a live report and passenger reaction on security at Philadelphia International Airport. And now the details. At this hour, at least 104 bodies have been recovered from the crash of TWA Flight 800. 228 people were on board the Boeing 747 when it crashed shortly after 8 o'clock last night off Long Island, about 10 miles south of East Moriches. The bodies were recovered from a wide area of the Atlantic Ocean. Right now, let's go live to John Rollins. He's near the scene of the crash in East Moriches. John? That's right, Lisa. The figures we've gotten is that uh, about 104 bodies were recovered. Two have been positively identified. Ten, ten have been tentatively identified. Uh, now, the officials here are treating the crash as an accident at this point. There certainly have been reports from sources that uh, there have been terroristic threats involved. But at this point, publicly at least, officials are saying that there is no evidence of a crime. The Coast Guard search patterns have covered about 240 square miles. What began as a rescue mission has become a recovery job. Bodies found were brought to a local Coast Guard station in a temporary morgue where these staffers work. Most of the bodies were intact. We feel very sad. And uh, were identifiable. Local Congressman Michael Forbes told reporters this afternoon at least one of the plane's two black boxes have been recovered. They have one of them. I'm not sure if they have both of them. But we're right now checking to see if they got the other one. The Coast Guard is using five helicopters in 27 boats. This journalist was a pool reporter on one of those boats. He described what was recovered. It seemed to me that the bigger something was, or the more identifiable it was, the more valuable it was. President John Keyser and his wife watched Flight 800 explode, but unlike many others, they spotted the plane prior to it becoming a fireball. The flight was going in a straight line, just like a normal plane was, and then she said it hit a like a 45 degree angle uh, uh, descent. And it was in that 45 angle descent that both of the, these minor, uh, the first explosion, and then uh, the ribbon of fire and large second explosion occurred. Now, certainly a number of people saw that uh, ribbon of fire and that, that explosion that did occur. Officials, though, repeat, say they no, have no evidence of an explosion at this point. However, they are continuing to look at debris as they pick it up. We need to clear up one fact there from that report. Congressman Forbes had said that it was his belief or he had been told that one of the black boxes had been found. The NTSB later said that doesn't seem to be the case. I'm John Rollins, live on the Action Cam in Long Island. All right, thank you, John. Several of the victims on board TWA Flight 800 were from this area. The passengers on the ill-fated flight include 56-year-old Arthur Benjamin, a teacher at Philadelphia's Masterman School, and his wife, Joan. Action News was at the school in Spring Garden today where Benjamin taught for six years. He was fondly remembered by one of his students today. Um, he treated each student individually. He was, he was very special with the students. He had a very close relationship. Um, he organized a lot of uh, activities and things. Benjamin's colleagues say he and his wife were on their way to Paris to see their daughter. They had also rented a chateau in the south of France, and the whole family was to meet there for a three-week vacation. The Benjamins obviously will be sorely missed. Another victim of TWA Flight 800 has a connection to a prominent Delaware Valley family. Judith Connolly de Louvrier was not initially scheduled to be on board the flight but decided to take the earlier flight to France to hurry home to see her two young children. Anita Brickman has more on the family background. If the Conley name sounds familiar, you may have noticed it on the landmark water tower so visible along the Schuylkill Expressway. The family's paper mill in Maniung and its headquarters and cardboard box manufacturing center in Balakinwid have been in operation for more than 50 years. In addition to the long-standing business, the family also created a foundation decades ago that continues to quietly reach out to charities across the Delaware Valley. But today the focus is not the Conley Corporation or its gifts to the community. Today the family mourns. 46-year-old Judith Delouvrier, a passenger on TWA Flight 800. One of six Conley brothers and sisters, Judith was married to Frenchman Philippe Delouvrier, 
They have two young children. The family calls New York City home, but also has a summer house in France. That's where Judith was heading when she boarded that fateful flight last night. Before the trip, she called her aging mother who lives in Bryn Mawr, and she called her husband. Today, the Conleys shared their memories of this artist, wife and mother, but asked that we otherwise respect their privacy in this time of grief. Now nine-year-old Henry and seven-year-old Isabel must face their mother's funeral and the still unanswered questions that surround her death. Anita Brickman, Channel 6 Action News. Well, many of the first people on the scene of the crash were people from Long Island who witnessed the disaster. They jumped, some of them, in private boats. They went out hoping to find survivors. There was uh, debris all over. Uh, we uh, ourselves picked up three bodies, uh, and we turned them over to the Coast Guard out there on the scene. We didn't bring them back home. But uh, there was debris all over, seats all over, uh, a duffel bag, shoes, uh, you name it, it was there. Parts of the airplane, wings, tail sections, it, I, was, it was all over. Probably a two square mile area of uh, solid debris. I picked up uh, two seats and there was two people still in the seats that hadn't been able to get out of the seats. Well, the bodies and all the debris were turned over to the Coast Guard for the investigation. Well, like airports across the country, security was already at a level three at Philadelphia International Airport, and now the FAA must decide whether to increase it even more. Suzanne LaFranchi is live on the action cam with the latest on that. Suzanne? Well, Monica, airport security rules will not change, at least not yet. A few moments ago, Mary Rose Loney, the aviation director here at the airport, announced that the airport will remain at a level three as it has since January. It means that if you are traveling, when you come to the airport, you need to be prepared to show photo identification. Airline personnel will ask you additional questions about baggage. You're also going to hear public address announcements asking you to be vigilant when you're in the terminal buildings. Pay attention to unattended baggage. Officials say the FAA could heighten security to a level four, which would include, among other things, only allowing ticketed passengers onto the concourse. Now, uh, airport officials say the TWA incident has not affected operations here at all, but many passion passengers say it has made them a bit more nervous. Flight attendant Leslie Ion is on her way to JFK. She'll fly TWA to Lisbon tonight. It's so overwhelming. It's, um, it's real close to home. A lot of tears, and I feel real sorry for all those people. It's very disturbing. Many of the international travelers admit they're anxious. Jean-Pierre Salzman says he's flown the New York to Paris flight several times. You know, it's like any form of accident or terrorism or whatever. You cannot let your life be influenced by that. British lawyer Mark Hellowell says he can't be fatalistic. You take risks um, in whatever you do, and uh, I suppose statistics is on our side in that uh, very rarely two uh, planes crash very uh, close together like that. So. Again, the security level will remain at a level three here. That could change at any time. The FAA could heighten security here and at airports across the country at any time. In the meantime, airport officials here are handing out uh, these pamphlets, especially to pa passengers who travel internationally. There are tips on how to remain safe and to keep their travel safe. For now, I'm Suzanne LaFranchi reporting live on the Action Cam from the Philadelphia International Airport. Thank you, Suzanne. And still to come on this early edition of Action News tonight, we will have more on the faith. Eyewitness News. In the hours after the crash, Eyewitness News reporter Lara Spencer reached the impact zone by boat. She found a wasteland of wreckage and luggage being collected by investigators. On Eyewitness News at 6, we will hear how some of those investigators were stunned by the nightmarish conditions that they first encountered. There were 228 people aboard Flight 800 when it exploded over the Atlantic, and there was supposed to be at least one more person on the flight, but Irene Rents missed her plane because her connecting flight well, was late. My flight, and he said, what's the flight number? And I thought that was a strange question. Why do you care? And um, so I told him 800, and he said, that just blew up over Long Island. What's your so I said, in hearing this? Well, what would yours be? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> wow. Really? Did you ever have your spine? Yeah. yeah. Really? You're kidding. And all really? That. What was your reaction? I, mean, I was shocked. I mean, obviously, I mean, I thought, wow, and I was supposed to be on that plane. That's amazing. Rince admits that she is lucky, but she says she cannot rejoice because more than 200 other people died. And while not all the names have been released yet, TWA did provide a breakdown of who was on board. Among the victims, 210 are listed as passengers. 
14 flight crew and four cockpit crew members for a total of 228 on board. Among the passengers were several TWA employees making their way to another flight. Flight 800 would have arrived early this morning at Charles de Gaulle Airport in Paris. Throughout the night there, family members and friends have been keeping a tearful vigil. The same thing is going on at Kennedy Airport, and that's where J.D. Dapper joins us live. J.D.? Well, Greg, that passenger manifest has been an issue since very early this morning. That's because without it, friends and relatives of the people presumably on Flight 800 have come to this Ramada Inn and had to sit and wait. Can you give us a room again? watching and saying that poor person. For many, it was simply too much. Too many cameras, too many questions, too many emotions. Yet families and friends of the victims made their way to the Ramada because here there was support. Here there were answers. Or were there? The mayor lashed out before dawn. Because of um, the totally incompetent and callous response of the upper management of TWA, it's impossible to really confirm for these people whether or not their loved ones were on the plane. Uh, they've been working on it for seven or eight hours, and uh, the person in charge has gone home to get some sleep. No official manifest meant that those who came to JFK when they heard the news, shell-shocked and numb, were left in limbo. There's no question that uh, the very least that can be provided to the families is answers. Uh, answers to questions where we have answers. After hours of attacks, TWA responded. The CEO reading a very brief statement, then leaving his communications director to meet the media. Yeah, we're, we're sorry the mayor is disappointed. Uh, we agree wholeheartedly with him that we wish we could do it faster. Uh, but uh, we are a little more interested in doing it right. But that didn't fly with those who would grieve, those like Frank Capoza, who put his 11-year-old French exchange student on that plane heading home to Paris. I think there are two tragedies here. The tragedy that, of course, occurred last night, but even a greater tragedy in that the way we, the families, have been treated by TWA. It is now 15 or 16 hours after the crash, and to the best of my knowledge, TWA still has not contacted the parents of that child in France. Now, shortly after that statement, the manifest was released, at least it was released inside here for the 150 to 200 people who are either friends or relatives of the people, again, presumably on Flight 800. Many of those people have now been briefed by the NTSB, who is reportedly here, as well as the mayor. We're told they gave the mayor a standing ovation once he talked to them about who was on the manifest. There are buses standing by to take some of them or all of them out to the end of Long Island to a, a temporary morgue. Whether they will go or not seems to be an issue that is still at this point up in the air. We are live at JFK, J.D. Dapper, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. J.D., as you know, TWA is keeping a hotline number open for family members seeking information about passengers aboard Flight 800. That number is 1-800-438-9892. Once again, 1-800-438-9892. If you were with us throughout this afternoon, you know that our reporter Celeste Ford called that number several times, did receive conflicting information, and she advises patience yes. if you use this particular service. And as you can tell, this story is changing almost every minute, and we'll be bringing you live updates as they they happen. Also, the people who witnessed this crash will hear more of their dramatic first-hand accounts. And coming up, the risks of flying. Does this tragedy and other fears have flyers grounding themselves today? And a little bit later on, one town's sorrow. A teen trip to Paris ends with the crash of Flight 800. Of our continuing coverage of the crash of TWA Flight 800. And here you see a live picture from Newscopter 7. This is a large Coast Guard barge. This barge has a crane on it, and this boat is being used to pull up some of the larger pieces as this salvage operation continues. Last night, as the jetliner burned, or the remains of the jetliner burned in the Atlantic, we spoke to witness after witness, people who saw the explosion and called Eyewitness News. Well, today, David Ushery spoke with some of those witnesses to tragedy. David is live in East Mauritius now. David. Yeah, Roz, as you can imagine, people I talked to today say they were actually mesmerized by the sight because they had never seen anything like it, and they hope to never, ever see it again. The backdrop was a picturesque sky over beach houses, and at first, onlookers had no idea they were watching disaster unfold frame by frame. They're filming a movie about four miles away, and I thought it was a scene from the movie. You know, it, it just was something that you would never think that that would be a plane falling out of the sky like that. The flame was so brilliant, the sight so startling, that it interrupted the relaxed dinner chat at John Scott's Raw Bar on West Hampton Beach. 
Jason Fontana was working there. I was uh, out on the patio because from the hurricane that blew our tent off, so we were fixing that up. You know, you looked up at the sky and you saw like a fireball coming across the sky. But it looked like it was just about above the houses. And you sort of dipped behind the houses and then it, there was an explosion that lit up that whole side of the sky, almost like a sunset. I was out on the patio. We heard a cl uh, clap of thunder, looked up, and there it was. There it was, happening on an otherwise routine summer evening. Many were not prepared to witness one of the deadliest air tragedies in New York history. I was trying to jumpstart a car that I have out front, and I, I just was closing everything up, and I saw, like, I thought it was like a meteor or something. And if the sight wasn't frightening enough, the sound of it, witnesses say, was horrific. And after you saw the initial explosion, there was like a two, um, there was like two loud booms. First one was like a big boom, and then the second one was even louder. And that happened, that happened right after the explosion. Just about every person I talked to said they weren't sure what they were seeing till they got home and saw the news. Then the reality of it settled in and they started replaying the images in their minds. And it is then that they really started getting shaken. Reporting live in East Mauritius, I'm David Oshry, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Thank you, David. And there's still a lot of questions about what went wrong, what brought this plane down. The questions that are being asked in our nation's capital. Coming up next, as prayers are said for the victims, President Clinton and others ask for action and answers. We're live in Washington. Coming up next. The 747 is the largest passenger jet in the skies. Is it also one of the safest? We're going to take a closer look at the 747 next. Part of a fleet of aircraft that has become the workhorse of airlines around the world. Stacey Sager is in our newsroom with details on this 747 and how this particular class of aircraft has performed over the years. Stacy. Well, Roz, the more we learn about this type of jet, the more we begin to understand just what it would take for one of these things to literally fall out of the sky. We know it's certainly not the kind of thing that happens easily. And after studying the 747 safety record, it doesn't happen often was just like this. It was a Boeing 747 Series 100, and it's considered an extremely safe way to travel. In fact, statistics from Boeing show the rate of accidents to be lower for this type of jet than for most of its counterparts. The Boeing 747 has 1.64 accidents per million departures. All other jet models have 1.83 accidents per million. It's a good, reliable uh, airplane has been around for a long time. Scott Monroe is a professor at the College of Aeronautics in Queens, and he believes it would take an immense force to blow one of these 747s out of the sky, the kind of force he simply hasn't seen in the past from something like an engine failure. It takes a lot to put an airplane out. Uh, we've had catastrophic failures of engines from time to time, but nothing that caused the airplane itself to go down. As for other facts about the plane that crashed, we know it holds a hefty load. Its maximum takeoff weight is 735,000 pounds. We also know it was built back in 1971, first for Eastern Airlines and then sold to TWA. The Boeing 100 series does happen to be the company's oldest 747 model. But repeatedly today, Boeing officials insisted that doesn't pose a problem because airplanes like this can last for decades as long as they're properly maintained. Today at a news conference, a TWA spokesman assured people the plane that crashed had met maintenance specifications, this only fueling the theory that the plane exploded from a terrorist bomb. Now, of course, both the voice recorder and the flight recorder both still need to be recovered. And in planes like this, these so-called black boxes are actually orange, stored in the rear of the plane. Hopefully, they will be recovered. Back to you, Ross. Stacy, thank you very much. New York Mayor Giuliani is closely following this story as well. He's giving a news conference at the airport. Here's the mayor. And uh, I promise to spend the evening uh, going back to the scene, gathering more facts, and bringing it back to them tomorrow morning, and spending the morning with them tomorrow morning as uh, the NTSB and the FBI and the police department and the others who are investigating this uh, come up with more facts rather than speculation. I, I, um, this is really a period of time in which we have to ask people to please exercise restraint and suspend judgment. There is no one that knows what happened to this airplane. Uh, there's be a lot of speculation, a lot of facts, and a real temptation to sensationalize. You do a great deal of damage when you do that to all the people that are in there and the others who have family members. Uh, <clears throat> this will be a very, very thorough investigation. The president has asked everyone uh, to please try to exercise restraint in the way in which uh, this whole matter is, is covered. Uh, let's all do the best we can to deal with facts rather than speculation and theories. Uh, I've been through very difficult investigations and 
police commissioner has. No one knows the answer to it until you're finished. And I mean, there will be all kinds of speculation. If you could please uh, be as restrained and as responsible as possible, it will help reduce the suffering and the pain uh, for those people who are very much affected by this. Mayor, can you describe for us uh, the mood inside the building now? Uh, the the uh, uh, people here are uh, remarkable for their patience and uh, dignity and uh, character. The, uh, they've had to go through an enormously long ordeal, which uh, started for most of them sometime around 10.30 or 11 or 11.30 or 12 last night, has lasted until now and doesn't uh, really look like it's going to be over for some time. They had very, very good questions for Mr. Gold, uh, all the questions that you would obviously uh, have at a time like this. They're very concerned about uh, now recovering the bodies of their loved ones so that they can be cared for in, uh, in the way in which they want. They, their religious tradition or tradition would have them do it. And uh, Mr. Gold explained to them uh, what's being done to try to recover all of the bodies, but at the same time to conduct a very sensitive and very, very difficult uh, investigation. This investigation, the police commissioner and I went to the scene, is being conducted literally uh, you know, at sea, in the ocean. Uh, the portion of the Atlantic Ocean it, 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 it's in is 70 miles out into the ocean and 10 miles south of, uh, of land. It's 120 feet deep, and uh, this is an enormously difficult and dangerous investigation for the FBI, for the police divers, and others. And uh, there's a, uh, a very, very large task force that now has been put together at the, uh, at the command center. They are working all day, they're working all through the night, and um, as soon as they have more facts, they'll be disclosed to the families and to the press. Are you still upset with TWA with, how, with the delay in releasing the list? Well, I now have the list. Uh, I believe this list uh, should have been uh, compiled a long, long time ago, and I think it would have relieved a lot of pain and a lot of suffering. None of us can uh, undo the terrible tragedy that occurred uh, yesterday. If you're in public office or you work for TWA, there's only one thing you can do now and that is to try to ease the suffering and the pain that people have. Uh, you shouldn't be making it worse. The delay made it worse. How soon will the family be able to go to the morgue to identify the... the that, that is, at, at this point, there is no um, real uh, answer to that. They, uh, certainly not tonight, certainly not uh, uh, during most of tomorrow, given uh, the things that the medical examiner and the FBI will have to do uh, in terms of the forensic investigation and other things. There are very obviously there are very serious questions about this incident, and uh, the FBI is treating it very seriously. I don't know the answer to that yet. All, all we have right now are telephone numbers, uh, so we 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 could count up the number of 212 uh, numbers. But in fact, I know that some of them because I know some of the people. Actually, that was their business number and not their. Uh, home number, so there's no way of ascertaining that how, right now. Mr. Mayor, you are very critical of how TWA handled this. Have they changed their it, I, I, at all? I, I, I'm, I'm going to guess that there are about 50 families, 55 families, maybe there were, by the time we came back uh, from Suffolk County, it seemed to me that there were easily 10, 15 more families. Are more expected tonight? Sir? I imagine more will come here, particularly as they learn the briefing schedule that the NTSB has set, which would be uh, at 9 in the morning and at 9 at night every day uh, with briefings going on as long as there are questions. Have you had contact with the people, the families from the people from Pennsylvania? Yes, um, I've had it. I, I was here when they arrived and I talked to them on and off uh, throughout the day. Is TWA meeting with the families? Are they doing more than what TWA, you TWA TWA for? now has uh, uh, people here that are assigned to each one of the families to assist them uh, during this uh, period of time and uh, never had any criticism at all for the TWA personnel. I think the TWA people that have been here have been sensitive, caring, uh, very much the same as the police officers and the police personnel and uh, the, uh, the other other volunteers that have been here. Uh, the difficulty was a um, bureaucracy at the top that uh, didn't have the sensitivity to get this job done in uh, something like a reasonable period of time as opposed to uh, taking forever to get it done. And then even when I left here, to go out to Suffolk County, it still took them another two hours uh, to get the job done. Have they changed, though? Have they become more accessible, the bureaucracy that you refer to? Uh, I, maybe we've spent enough time on it. 
uh, ho hopefully, hopefully, hopefully from now on, uh, this will motivate them to uh, go the extra mile to show sensitivity, concern, caring, and help. And uh, it seemed to me that that was the spirit that was displayed in the room uh, uh, a few minutes ago. Pardon me? How many families are inside right now? I, I'm really guessing. I think it's about 60. What was the most common question the families had for Mr. Gold? What, uh, essentially what happened? And maybe even more than that, uh, when, when they could recover the remains of their uh, loved ones. Any idea how many of the different numbers? We've been watching a live briefing from uh, Mayor Giuliani. He began this briefing with a reminder to all of us saying, please do not rush to judgment, exercise restraint in what you report because this investigation is ongoing. It is proceeding slowly, and he reminded all of us once again that we are conducting this investigation at sea, and some of the information is 125 feet below the surface, and so it's going to take time. Mm, Great. A difficult day for the mayor, too, yes. who you may have heard also knew someone on board this flight as well. Hmm. Well, President Clinton is offering his condolences to the friends and families of victims of TWA Flight 800. The bells were tolling at the National Cathedral in memory of the victims of the crash. Andy Field joins us live now from Washington with more on the federal government's reaction. Andy? Well, Greg, here in Washington, the FAA, the NTSB, the FBI, all the investigators are anxious to get their hands on any piece of wreckage, the flight recorders, any evidence that they could bring into their specialized labs here in Washington to determine exactly what happened. Now the, uh, the top priority now is to find out if this was indeed deliberate or an accident. At the White House today, President Clinton honored the crash victims. Join me in a moment of silent prayer for those students, for the other victims, and for their families. While the president led a prayer for the crash victims, virtually every investigative branch of his government is trying to understand what went wrong. Mr. Clinton says it's still too early to know whether this was a terrorist attack. I'm determined that we will find out what happened, but I want to urge all the American people not to jump to any unwarranted conclusions. But ABC News has learned that a group called the Movement for Islamic Change issued a specific warning about an attack to major Arab newspapers in London and Washington. The warning was apparently not passed along. Investigation sources say the explosion was almost certainly the act of terrorists and the leading theory now is that the airliner was destroyed by a shoulder-fired anti-aircraft missile similar to the Stinger. Because of range limitations, sources say terrorists would have had to have fired it from a boat well off the Long Island shoreline. A former State Department anti-terrorism expert feels something must have ignited in or out of the plane. But if you go back and look at the number of catastrophic failures of aircraft of this nature in the air that have been brought down, uh, the vast majority of them have been brought down because of a bomb on board. U.S. airlines only use bomb-sniffing dogs on suspicious packages or luggage. Virtually all other bags are not checked. Security simply makes sure luggage matches the person with a ticket. New York Congressman Charles Schumer has long asked for tougher airport security, even if it makes travel inconvenient. You know, look at Israel. Israel hasn't had a terroristic incident done against one of its planes in over a decade. Travel to, Israel, to and from Israel is a little slower, but it's not that much slower. Of course, it's the, if this does turn out to be a missile, offshore missile attack, there is little, if anything, airport security could do to prevent that. We are live in Washington. Andy Field, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. Andy, thank you very much. TWA Flight 800 provides a backdrop of fear during a season of peak travel for airlines. The question becomes, are some people now afraid to board planes? Celeste Ford is live at Kennedy Airport with some answers. Celeste. Is it 2.30? 2.30. The of rush hour is still underway. Around this time yesterday, the passengers and crew of Flight 800 walk through these doors. This evening, air travelers can't miss the big command post set up by the Port Authority Police, along with a heightened security. TWA clearly wants to reassure the public that it's safe to fly. No one is permitted to enter the TWA terminal without a ticket, and Port Authority police patrol the area, attempting to smooth the frayed nerves of air travelers on TWA. Many know they could have ended up on the downed plane. Susan Pickard says she and her seven-year-old daughter, Becky, almost stayed in Miami today. And your greatest concern? Um, everything about flying and, you know, the value jet incident a couple of months ago in Miami, the incident last night, and just flying in general. I'm just, 
I do not like flying. Lisa Scala prepared to board a flight to Puerto Rico knowing several of her father's friends died on flight 800. Very sad hearing everything that was going on uh, in the accident. Um, no reservations. I think it'll be more safe than anything when something like this happens the day before. This man, like many business travelers, says he has to fly and doesn't think about it. Others deploy logic over emotion. I'm a little concerned, but I'm not going to let it stop me from my, uh, my, my plans. It was an especially difficult day for TWA employees. They stood by the terminal looking shaken and distraught. Norman Nordland flies a 747 like the one that crashed. 747 group is a closely knit group. It's a small operation and uh, everybody knows everybody. Simple as that. After something like that happens, you do stop and think for a few minutes. Um, maybe I should change professions. Maybe this isn't a job I should be in because one day this might happen to me. But then you just kind of say, well, it could happen to me anywhere. TWA says its flights are on time out of Kennedy this evening, and one representative said very few customers have canceled their plans today, although the airline acknowledges some people may be jittery about flying, and if you have a ticket to leave during the next five days, you can get a refund, even if it's one of those restricted tickets. And we're live at Kennedy Airport, Celeste Ford, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. All right, so that's the latest from JFK. And just ahead on Eyewitness News, the crash of Flight 800 hits home for one New Jersey community. And it is heartbreaking for members of a small Pennsylvania town. The tragic end to a student trip. That story is next. One of the town's officials was killed in the accident. New Jersey correspondent David Navarro has details. As word spread through Tenafly City Hall today, flags were put at half-staff and police wore black bands over their shields. But little could truly express the loss they felt upon learning the town's borough administrator, Robert Miller, and his wife, Betty, were among those on TWA Flight 800. We're, we're in shock, and it's not the kind of shock that there it is and then it goes away. This is going to go on for a while. 62-year-old Robert Miller was a well-liked town administrator who for some time has been looking forward to visiting France with his wife, Betty, pictured here with their only daughter. He's really looking forward to going down to uh, the Burgundy area of France. He's a wine lover, and he was anxious to visit the, uh, the vineyards, mm -hmm. taste the, the wine, and take pictures of everything. He and his wife planned this trip for a long time, and... Uh, they wanted to take it before they got too old to enjoy it. Miller was the borough administrator for the last four and a half years. Today, his office was just as he left it before packing for his vacation. Betty Miller taught English as a second language to grade school students in Dumont. Upon learning the tragic news, Police Chief Alan Lane contacted close friends of the family to reach out to their only daughter in Colorado. We picked her up this afternoon at, uh, at Newark Airport, and I have an officer there with her now. This afternoon, Miller's co-workers and friends finally remembered the borough administrator. Everyone loved Bob, and uh, it's difficult for us to go on. Borough officials say a memorial service is sure to be held in the days ahead, but at this point, the pain is still too great for any plans to be made. Reporting live from Tenafly, David Navarro, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Thank you, David. Bill Butel and the rest of the Eyewitness News team are working on several developments as far as the crash of Flight 800 is concerned. He is in the newsroom right now with a preview. Bill. Okay, Roz, thank you very much. Coming up on Eyewitness News at 6 o'clock tonight, the latest on the crash of TWA Flight 800, the search for victims, the debris, the answers to some questions. We'll have the very latest on the investigation in a live report. Plus, more than 200 passengers were on this plane, some of them from our area, and friends and relatives could not contain their grief. We'll have the latest on who was on the plane and why. And metropolitan area airports were already on a state of heightened alert, have been for months. We'll have those stories and a good deal more on TWA Flight 800 at 6 o'clock, and I hope you join us then. Now back to Ros and Greg in the studio. Bill, we have much more on the 5 o'clock hour of Eyewitness News, including the renewed fear of international terrorism. Yes, was this the act of terrorist, and do we need to be concerned? Answers coming up next as our live coverage continues. It has also brought tragedy to the small town of Montersville, Pennsylvania, a town in shock over the loss of a group of talented students who were on their way to a dream trip in Paris. The story from Flora Pastorero in Montersville, Pennsylvania. I just hope you guys are all right. For some of the students at Montoursville High School, hearing that their friends and classmates had perished in TWA Flight 800 was too hard to bear. We're all shocked. 
we're all completely shocked and, you know, we just can't believe it happened. 18-year-old Dan Buschewski, 15-year-old Claire Gallagher, and 15-year-old Julia Grimm among the 16 French students on the passenger list presumed dead. Some of the nicest kids I've ever been involved with, I just great kids, you take them home in a minute. Your own sons and daughters if you stop them tomorrow, you know. Students poured into the school all day. The flags were at half staff, and some of the children put up ribbons and flowers. Devastated. I, I just, I, I was in shock. I couldn't believe it happened. I, I, just, I still can't, I still can't believe it happened. They were walking this community in the streets. At a local Catholic church in Montoursville, the pastor tried to make sense of this nightmare that has devastated this community. We'll never, ever have a sorrow as deep and as painful as the one that struck them at that moment. The sorrow has touched so many. That was Flora Pastorero reporting from Montersville, Pennsylvania. Greg, as you know, the mystery surrounding the cause of the crash of Flight 800 continues. Although it is officially being treated as an accident, terrorism appears to be high on the list of probable causes. And Tim Fleischer is here with more on this subject. Tim. Roz, while many suggest not to jump to conclusions this early in the investigation, suspicion, even initial reaction, has questioned the possibility of a bomb, possibly terrorism. The immediate reaction is a bomb. I think that's the normal reaction. I and with Bill Callahan's expertise in international security and investigation, with a background in narco-terrorism, he now wonders. We're human beings, and we know that when you have an explosion of that magnitude, it's either a mid-air collision or it's an explosion, probably an inflammatory device, probably a bomb. Also, a joint terrorism team has begun investigations. Clearly, it feels it's a question that must be answered. We have no evidence on this uh, flight yet. But on the question of the possibility of terrorism in the crash of Flight 800, the president believes there should not be a rush to judgment. When we had the terrible tragedy in Oklahoma City, a lot of people immediately concluded that this must have been done by some force outside our country, and it appears uh, that that was not the case now. So let's wait until we see the evidence. Suspicions, though, turn to a bomb and terrorism, also by what we've seen from recent action history. This scene, the hijacker of a TWA flight waving a gun in the face of the pilot, left an indelible memory in people's minds. Then came the Pan Am flight, blown up in midair over Lockerbie, Scotland, all on board and many on the ground killed by what was later determined to be a terrorist bomb. And closer to home, the bombing of the World Trade Center. Terrorism is on the increase, not on the wane comes and goes, uh, and it's something we have to be very, very vigilant about and probably will increase, not go away. Certainly no one knows for sure in the case of Flight 800, but past events certainly lead a great many of us to ask a good many questions. Ross, right? Still a lot of questions, Tim, thanks. And our coverage of the crash of TWA Flight 800 will continue in a moment, and we'll also have some important weather news that you'll need to hear about. We'll be back. TWA flight hangs over the opening of the Olympics in Atlanta. With opening ceremonies set for tomorrow night, officials are expressing confidence in the security measures they have in place. Officials say Atlanta's airport will be safe for the millions of visitors expected. They say people should not act hastily and link the TWA accident with the Olympic Games. And a uh, little more. Now, because of Hurricane Bertha leaving so many relatives of the victims of that flight and their reaction to today's events. These families will never be the same again. Their lives have been shattered. And it's something that you don't ever get over. You weave it into the fabric of your life, and you go on. Aphrodite Tisseris is speaking from experience. Her life was shattered on December 21st, 1988. Her daughter, Alexia, was among the 270 people killed in the terrorist bombing of Pan Am Flight 103 over Lockerbie, Scotland. You lose your kids, you just, it's the most important thing in your life. So you really take strength from places you never thought you had it before. Alexia Tisseris was a photojournalism student abroad in London when she got on that fateful flight. The picture she once took still lined the walls in the hallway. For Tisseris, the disaster of Flight 800 brings back so many memories, painful memories she'd just as soon forget. Tisseris says she knows exactly what the families of the people on that flight are going through, and she's horrified by the actions of TWA. Just like the TWA families, Tisseris says she had to fight with Pan Am to get confirmation about her child. 
and that was the most horrible time of her life. You need to know that in a certain seat, there was a certain person with a certain name, and that person belonged to you. Tessaris didn't know about her daughter until two days later, and she found that out on television. Tessaris hopes to reach out now to the families of the people on TWA Flight 800, but she says that what they need most of all is the complete and total support of the government and airline in this awful time of crisis. Marianne Wright, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. And with that, that's our report tonight on Eyewitness News at 5 o'clock. Thanks for tuning in. For Roz Abrams, Bill Evans, the rest of the Eyewitness News team, I'm Greg Hurst. The news continues now with Bill Butel. Thank you, Roz. 7 Eyewitness News, the Tri-State Area's news leader. You're watching ABC Channel 7, New York. This is the Tri-State Area's news leader, Channel 7 Eyewitness News, with Bill Butel. Scott Clark with sports, Sam Champion with the exclusive AccuWeather forecast, and the Eyewitness News team. Now, Eyewitness News. A heartbreaking job tonight off the coast of Long Island. Rescue efforts become recovery efforts, almost 24 hours after the fiery crash of TWA Flight 800. Good evening, I'm Bill Butel. Tonight we face a cruel and frightening uncertainty. Was the crash of Flight 800 an accident, an act of God, or an act of terrorism? The debris that's been pulled from the sea is evidence in what might become a criminal investigation. The shock is still setting in for the families who had a loved one or a friend among the 228 people on board the jet. Suspicions are mounting that last night's fiery crash may have been the work of terrorists. A warning note has turned up. And our coverage begins with Tara Wallace on Long, Sarah Wallace on Long Island, live in East Mauritius. Sarah? Good evening, Bill. Governor Pataki left here just a few moments ago. He told us that scuba divers will go into the waters here tomorrow. They will try and find the two black boxes, the cockpit voice recorder and the flight data recorder. He also said something very significant. He said that there is every reason to believe that the FBI is possibly classifying this as a criminal investigation, that they are characterizing this as a potential criminal investigation, and there may be a good reason for that. Right now, 104 bodies have been pulled from the wreckage pulled from the ocean around here. They have been recovered, and unfortunately, what it very much looks like at this point is there is no longer any survivors. There, of course, is still hope, and the governor says that no matter what happens, they will keep searching until that last hope has expired. Uh, at this point also, what's going on is that they are continuing to search the area around the wreckage. They have found a number of significant parts. They have found a lot of the uh, parts of the plane, the fuselage, and what's happening with those parts is they are now going to be taken to a hangar nearby and they will be reconstructed as part of the criminal investigation. And the bodies themselves could also prove to be an important part of the criminal investigation because there may be evidence on them as well. So what those bodies have been done is that they are being transported to the medical examiner's office. Now, N.J. Burkett has a fascinating story. He's live in West Hampton Beach with some incredible uh, story of a pilot who saw what happened last night. N.J.? Now, Sarah, this has all happened here over the past several minutes. A stunning revelation from a crucial eyewitness. Now, Eyewitness News reported last night that airmen from the Air National Guard here in West Hampton were on a routine training mission at the time of the crash. The commander of that mission told reporters just minutes ago that he saw an arcing white light cross the horizon seconds before that 747 exploded in flames. I saw what appeared to be the sort of course and trajectory that you see when a shooting star enters the atmosphere. And I was very curious because it was bright and you can't see that during daylight. Almost immediately thereafter, I saw in rapid succession a small explosion and then a large explosion. And the large explosion engulfed the small explosion into a huge fireball that just then began to fall very slowly from the sky. So what was it? The major refused to speculate, but his eyewitness account has been turned over to federal authorities as this investigation gets underway tonight. We're live tonight, West Hampton Beach, Long Island. N.J. Burke at Channel 7 Eyewitness News. N.J. and Sarah, thank you very much. Jim Dolan has been following the recovery efforts since Flight 800 crashed last night. He joins us now live from Newscopter 7. Jim? Yeah, Bill, it's a far different scene right now up here in Newscopter 7 than it was last night when we arrived here sometime before the 11 o'clock broadcast. Well, let's go outside and take a look at it right now. Uh, all day, this, uh, today and uh, through much of last night,
last night, there have been a lot of helicopters in the air and a lot of boats. Uh, they are both reduced quite a bit uh, at this hour. We're at about 6,000 feet. The reason we are so high is to give the Coast Guard and police aircraft plenty of room to do their much more important work down below, closer to the surface. There are at least a couple of, uh, there were at least a couple of helicopters up until just a few minutes ago trying to spot any pieces of debris in the water. That information is then relayed to the boats. The boats go over uh, with their cranes and their equipment and pick that debris up. We know, for example, from the World Trade Center investigation that chemical analysis of even very small pieces of debris can show traces that will indicate what kind of may have been used in World Trade Center trials or but none so important as those small pieces of the van that identified it as one rented by the defendants, and of course the tiny pieces of the canister that held the bomb and contained traces of that bomb. In this case, of course, they don't yet know if there was a bomb. Okay, Jim, thank you very much. We apologize for the lost signal from Newscopter 7, but I'm sure you got the point of, uh, of Jim's report. The rescue efforts off Mauritius Inlet have not let up since the plane went down last night, but as the hours passed, the rescue effort became a very grim recovery mission. A lot of debris from the plane is floating on top of the water. Other bodies and pieces of the plane are presumably buried under 120 feet of water. The way the debris is scattered also provides valuable clues to investigators. Uh, Crossway 30 to 40 bodies in another debris area that was about about a half mile away from where the fire was. Uh, probably indicative that the airplane came down in at least two sections. The recovery effort is extraordinarily difficult and it's expected to last for several days. Flight 800 crashed into the ocean about 10 miles off the coast of Long Island. Everyone except rescue personnel have been barred from that area, but our reporter Laura Spencer was able to get out to the scene and she's live in Eastern Riches now with an exclusive report. Laura? Well, Bill, behind me those uh, vessels at the Coast Guard staging area are the only ones allowed anywhere near the crash site, but that was not the case earlier, and we spent much of the day at ground zero, and I can tell you, beyond that restriction point, what my crew and I saw is something we will never forget. On board the Coast Guard's recovery ship, the remains of TWA Flight 800, what was a massive 747, now a single pile of debris. It is an incomprehensible picture that confirms the magnitude and horror of last night's explosion. And you went out there hoping, anticipating someone might be in the water needing help, and what happened is that the, uh, there was no sounds of any human cries, sort of say, or any human life, uh, like a typical plane crash. You know, the, the, the ocean, the water was on fire, so we had to be careful of getting too close to it. Volunteers like Jim Vaccaro used their own boats to help the Coast Guard and FBI search for survivors last night, and today, search for bodies. We kept turning chairs to see if there was anybody in them, because they were mostly floating downright. But uh, Seeing what you saw, did you really expect to see any survivors? No. No. Did not expect to see any survivors whatsoever. And none were found. Only painful reminders of the 229 human beings also scattered in these ominous waters off the coast of Long Island. Floating alongside parts of the plane, a sealed and addressed letter now with no destination. Luggage intact and complete with name tags and a single lady's shoe. But it was this item, a young boy's newly issued U.S. passport that hit home for volunteer Joe Lallier. A kid's passport was like 15. I'm sorry, but the kid's passport, it just, it really hit home. Emotions are running high, and yes, the search for victims is all but over, and most of the larger parts of the plane have been recovered, but you can see boats behind me continue to go out looking for, they say, the key that may solve this tragic, tragic accident, or whatever it may be. We are live in East Mauritius. I'm Lara Spencer, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Thank you, Lara, very much. A short time ago, TWA released the flight manifest to friends and relatives of people on the doomed airliner, but some lawmakers and relatives say it took far too long. Tearful relatives arrived at Kennedy Airport not knowing for sure if their loved ones were or were not on the flight. Frank Capaza put a 12-year-old exchange student who was living with him on flight 800 last night. For a fact, that young boy was on the plane. I think there are two tragedies here. The tragedy that, of course, occurred last night but even a greater tragedy in that the way we, the families, have been treated by TWA. It is now 15 or 16 hours after the crash, and to the best of my knowledge, TWA still has not contacted the parents of that child in France. Once again, TWA finally did release the manifest to the relatives, but it has not.